Yes, Sam. Hello, Joe. How's the dogs holding out? Well, there's no complaints today, only this one. Say, what is this you ordered from Chicago? It weighs like half a ton. Oh, well, it's finally got here, huh? That's for the kid. Pat! A letter from New York, too. Oh, that's the insurance policy. They okayed it last week. It's one of those college education things for Pat. Oh, that's a swell idea. Yeah. I'm not taking any chances, Sam. This kid's gonna get the brakes. Oh, Uncle Sam. Hello, yes, Pat. Pop? Hey, yes, son. For me? A little present for Daniel Boone. A present, huh? You been in trouble again, Pop? How do you like this? Hey, come on, open it up. You're keeping Uncle Sam's mails waiting. That a boy. Waste plenty, whatever it is. Hey, give me the box. Ah. Whoa! The woods money, kid. Don't if they aren't man-sized, too, huh? Boy, if my beard was a little tougher, I'd go right in and shave. Wait till the gang sees this. Oh, thanks a million, Pop. Forget it. Hey, fellas! Pretty good job, huh, Sam? Yeah. All boy and perfect, that's it. I said no, and that's final. You can say it till you're blue in the face, but I'm going too. Well, we'll just see about that now. We'll see about that. You bet we will, of all the idiotic stunts you ever try to pull. Flash! Last night at 64 Elm Street, the Marty Hannans had their first battle royal in years. You keep out of this, Joe. Their star boarders, Joseph and Patrick Reynolds, were asked not to participate. What's going on here, Agnes? Marty wants to go on a fishing trip without me. And that's final. That's what you think. What, are you out of your head? Well, I got my reasons. Being perfectly childish. Oh, you you got to go with them, Agnes. If you don't, who's going to cook for them? Hey, now look, Joe, you may be forming at the plan, but that don't go in my house. Oh, you big baboon, you don't know how lucky you are. Now, if I had a wife like Agnes... Pat was asking me about his mother today. He forgot to put the picture back. Uh, who ever heard of going on a vacation without the wife? Well, I'll think it over. Thanks, big-hearted. <laughs> oh, before I forget, this is due today. Thanks. Thank you. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Joe, you should have seen Pat using elbow grease today. He cleaned your room and his own without my asking. Well, sure. It's his home. Our home, isn't it? Oh, uh, Agnes, would uh, Marty and I have time for the short one down to the corner? Oh, all right, go ahead. But only one, Marty Hannon. It makes him see double and feel single. <laughs> I must say, it gives me pleasure to see a man reading. There are other forms of literature besides detective magazines. Like the return addresses on the letters I deliver, huh? Why, Sam, Lord, you tell me of your own free will who's writing to whom. I do not pry into other people's affairs. Well, maybe so. It's awfully funny how things start happening to people almost as soon as you say they will. Did Mrs. Nugent get that first alimony check yet? I don't know. I didn't wait around to see what was in the letter. Well, I like that. You had time to waste with poor little... Pat and his insurance policy. Yeah. See, that was a swell hatchet that Joe bought the kid. Yeah. It's too bad we haven't got a little son like Pat. I think of all the things I could buy for him. Like a subscription to Mystery Classic? No, he's been spared that. Sam Lord, I put shoes on you and I married you and you'll please wear them to the table. Oh, dear. Such formality. You'd think this was the Waldorf. That'll be six fifty for those boxes. Right, sure it is. Hey, I'm just yep, right. I've had enough trouble with you and your old man. I want my hatchet. You got a dollar? You've done that much damage anyway. When you bring me the money, you can have your hatchet back. Now go on, beat it. Go on. Get out of here. Gee, that was a neat hatchet. 
You can kiss it goodbye. He had no right to keep it. Hey, boys. I've been looking for you, Pat. Old man Kenny made a complaint. Let him go. He didn't do Old nothing. Old man Kenny's a sourpuss. Shut up or run you all in. Oh, I'll give him a break. Honestly, he didn't hurt anything. Come on, Pat. The captain wants to talk hey, to you. Clary, what's the matter? You having trouble with my boys? Hey, Uncle Sam. Look what he's doing to Pat. That looks like a big pinch. You'll probably get promoted for this. Don't get sarcastic with me. What's the charge? No charge, but Pat's been stealing lumber from Old Man Kenny's bakery. Old Man Kenny. He hasn't got 10 cents worth of lumber that's good enough to steal. He made the complaint. That's just more of his picking on Joe. He never misses a chance. What goes on here? Pat and his gang have been stealing old man Kenny's wood. Look, Clary, my kid don't steal. Since when is it a crime for kids to take an old crate? We used to do it. So did you, Clary. I don't do it now. <laughs> Pop? Eh? Kenny kept my hatchet. Oh, he did, did he? Well, I'll get that hatchet back or I'll bash his bonehead to a pulp. Now, wait a minute, Joe. Don't go blowing your top, will you? Look, Sam, he can have it in for me, but he don't have to take it out in the kid. Where does he get off sending Clary oh, down right, here? Now, wait, wait. Will you let me handle it, will you? Huh? All right, you All handle right, it. Good. Hey, wait now, a minute now. Listen, listen, Clary. Kenny didn't lose anything, did he? No. You don't want to shame that kid by taking him down to the station. You got kids of your own, Clary. Yeah. Well, then it's all right, ain't it? I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so? All right. Sure, that's better. <laughs> Where's your boss, Pete? You got two fine cakes there, Mrs. Sims. Well, they ought to be, Pete, for a dollar and a quarter. Where's your boss, Pete? My goodness, Joe Reynolds, what's the matter? Can't you see I'm waiting on a lady, and after her comes Mr. Bolton? I'm very sorry, Mrs. Sims. My business here is important. Where's Kenny? What's going on out here? Listen, Kenny. My kid just told me that you hit him. That's nothing to what he'll get the next time I catch him on my property. Well, don't you ever lay your hand on him again. I'm warning you. And I'm warning you. Keep him away from me. He's a pest. Oh, is that so? Yeah, a troublemaker. Now get out of here. Look, Kenny, what you think of me or my kid doesn't matter. But in the future, don't you ever lay a hand on him. Now, come on, give me his hatchet right now. Sure. Just as soon as you pay me the $3 for the damage he done. Oh, now it's three dollars. Pat told me you only wanted a dollar. It's too much, but I'll pay it just so there won't be any argument. Give me the hatchet. I told him three dollars. If he said less, he's a dirty little liar. And I won't. Well, get out of my store. Doing, you. Give me that hatchet. Not until I get those three dollars. Give me that hatchet. For being a hog, you don't get nothing, but I'm going to get that kid's hatchet. I tell you, you can't have it. Come on, give me that hatchet or I'll bust this joint wide open. <laughs> Touch him, he fell and hit his head on the stove. He's dead. Oh. There's blood on the axe. You killed him. No, I didn't. I, I swear I didn't. We all saw you hit him. Somebody get a cop. You deliberately hit that poor man. Call the police. Murder. Pete, get the he police. We've hit got him. to get hold of the police. Hello, operator. Quick, give me the police. Marty, I gotta get out of town. What's up, Joe? Look, get over on the window and watch for the cops, will you? Joe, you're in Please trouble. Please do as I say, will you, Marty? What is it, Joe? Magnus, go over with Joe, will you? What'd you do that for? Pat, listen, I only got a minute, then I gotta beat it. They think I hit him in the head with the hatchet, but I didn't. I didn't touch him. I don't care about the rest. It's only you I'm interested in. Now, look, just remember this. I didn't kill him. Who? Old man Kenny. Well, you know I wouldn't. Sure, Pop. And he hung onto the hatchet, and I tried to get it away from him, and he slipped and fell and hit his head on the stove. You believe me, don't you, Pat? Yes, Pop. Now, look, you be good and stay here. Marty and Agnes will take care of you. When this thing blows over, I'll come back, right? Wait a minute. Marty, how much can you loan me? I only got a couple of bucks. How about you, Agnes? I banked everything this morning. Yeah, but I got to get some ready cash somewhere. Joe! Here they come. Hey. Maybe Sam has got some cash. He'll be down at that boys' club of his. That's right. Pop, I'm going with you. No, you stay here. Joe Reynolds here? No, he isn't here. 
Search the place. Now listen, go in there and see if Sam is there. If he is, tell him I want to see him right away. I'll be in Kearney's alley, right? Okay. Go ahead. Keep that left high. Don't let him get under there. That's good. Sam! Yeah, yeah. I want you. Hey, uh, Fatso, come here. Yeah? You referee here. I'll be right back. Okay. Huh? Come on, Ernie. Keep your guard up. That's it. Hey, Pat. What's the trouble? Pop will tell you. All right, you wait here. Hey, Joe. You're here, Sam. What's wrong? Sam, can you get me some cash quick? What's wrong? I had a fight. Old man Kinney, he slipped and fell. I swear I hit him. Well, so what? If he has you a pinch, they'll fine you five bucks, that's all. But they think I hit him with a hatchet, Sam. They, they say he's dead. Dead? Yeah. Sam, I gotta get out of town. The look of your innocent, all you gotta do is stay here, face it, and please. Look, I know what I gotta do, and that's get out of town. This blows over now. Can you help me or not? Yeah. Yeah, sure, I can help you. Um, look, wait for me at my home, huh? Pop, I'm scared. Oh, forget it, Pat. Come on. See you later, Sam. Right. You've got a big, angry mouth, Joe. But you'd never kill a man for all of that. Look, what's keeping Sam? Will you tell me? Oh, he'll be here if he said he would. Look, Pat, I want you to go over to Marty's and stay there and behave yourself, understand? Now, I'll get back just as soon as the town cools down a bit. Ah, oh, take me with you, Pop. I won't be any trouble. What's your hurry? Joe, I want to explain this thing. You brought the cops here. Now, look, it's the only way. You, you're not guilty. You, you, you got nothing to fear. You brought the cops here. Joe, don't you see? Running away with... Why, you double cross? Joe, it's the only thing to do. I'll help you fight it out in court. I don't want your help. Come on, Reynolds. Bring him along. Pop, what are they going to do? It's all right, Pat. You go home and go to bed. I'll take him home. I think you've done enough for me, Sam. Pop! Oh, Pat, it'll be all right. You know, Kate, I wish I could convince Joe that I was still his friend. I know he didn't kill Kenny. I know it was an accident. Of course it was. If I could only get to see him and talk to him, you know? Be better off talking to his lawyer. You think I did something wrong, too? No, Sam. But when things go wrong, people just don't understand good motives. Maybe if you hadn't interfered. All right, all right. Skip it. Forget about it. You all ready for church? Yes, I'm ready. If you think I'm going to be seen with you in church without your shoes, you've got another guest coming. I could have sworn I had him on. you tried to talk Joe into pleading guilty. Guilty? To manslaughter. Ten years. Pop didn't do it, did he? No, but now he's fired the guy. Gee, Pop hasn't got any friends, has he? Yeah, sure he has, sure he has. Well, we'll find a lawyer who has time to plead for an acquittal. Come on. Now then, Mrs. Sims, you say you observed Mr. Kenny's death from your position in the doorway of the back room of the bakery. Yes. Was Joe Reynolds standing between you and Mr. Kenny? Yes. Then, Mrs. Sims, how could you see where the axe fell if Joe Reynolds stood between you and Mr. Kenny? You're trying to confuse me. I did see it fall now, and... just a minute, Mrs. Sims. Please, I don't want to hurt Joe Reynolds or anybody else, but I did see him raise the axe and bring it down like that. How else did Mr. Kenny's head get split open? Wait a minute, they're all lying. It was an accident, I tell you. Joe, you gotta it. believe me, Judge. He was an old man. Get I wouldn't hit him. 
The defendant must refrain from any further outbursts of that sort. That will be all, Mr. Sims. I will now call Samuel Lord to the stand. What's he trying to do? Samuel Lord. Uncle Sam, you'll get him off, won't you? Mr. Lord, how long have you known Joe Reynolds? Well, ever since we went overseas in 1917, we were just kids. And you were buddies, eh? Yes, sir. I've looked into both your war records. You both showed great courage over there. Oh, I don't know. Well, Joe there was a very good soldier, yes. Yes, I even see that Reynolds was decorated for distinguished bravery. Yes, he was. Do you recall what that was for? Well, I'm a pretty good person to answer that question. He saved my life. Well, I can certainly understand your friendship. Oh, it, it wasn't just on account of that. Naturally, I appreciated it, but Joe's my friend because I like him, that's all. Now, Mr. Lord, on the day of the crime, Joe's son was almost arrested for stealing Mr. Kenny's wood. It wasn't that serious. Pat wouldn't steal. Suppose you tell us all that was said when Officer Cleary picked up Pat. Well, at first I kidded him about making a big pinch, and I told him that Kenny didn't have enough lumber worth stealing. Yes, and then? About that time, Joe came running up, and he went right for Cleary, and he said, my son doesn't steal, Cleary, because Pat was mainly concerned because Kenny had kept his hatchet. Was that all that was said? Yes, then Joe went in the house with the boy. Now think, Mr. I... Lord. Are you certain that was all that Reynolds said? Yes. Now take your time. Well, uh, Pat told Joe that Kenny had kept his hatchet. Oh, then uh, Joe said, oh, is that so? Well, I'll get it back for you if I have to bash his bonehead to a pulp. Of course, he, he didn't mean that. Then, Mr. Lord, he actually did threaten Mr. Kenny's life. No, no, he, he said those words, but if you know Joe, now, you know just a he moment. Just... You prevented him from evading the police, didn't you? Yes, but that... that's all. Your witness. No questions of his time. Thank you, Mr. Lord. You talk too much. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, the witnesses for the prosecution were honest, but mistaken in their account of Kenny's death. Seeing the axe in Joe's hand, they concluded from that unfortunate circumstance that he struck at the man. But Joe never struck a blow. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no element of circumstantial evidence in this case. Three reliable witnesses saw what happened. And Sam Lord's testimony is evidence that Reynolds voiced a murderous intention hours before the crime was committed. While the state has presented the direct or positive evidence of eyewitnesses, you must carefully consider the contention of the defense that such evidence is circumstantial and incorrectly interpreted. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? What is your verdict? We find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Joe. You could fix everything, huh? Why? You sure did. You sold me out again, didn't you? Oh, come on, come on. You stay away from him. Forget everything good I ever said about him. Come on, come on. He turned me over to the cops. His big mouth set me up. Pat, I... I couldn't help it, Pat. Come on, kid. I don't suppose that, uh... Pat's been around here lately, has he? Not since the trial, he hasn't. No. Well, I guess that's because of the way he feels about me. But that isn't any reason why he shouldn't play with you fellas. Now, you mustn't let what happened to his father make any difference to you. No, it isn't because of that, but... But nothing. You've all been his pals, haven't you? You're right, Sam. He'll come back. Pat's a great guy. Say, maybe we'll even make him like you again. Yeah. <laughs>
they're moving me today. No luck? They're moving me to the birdcage. They're moving you? You mean your appeal didn't come through? Take it easy, kid. Mike. So long, fellas. Say, Mike. What's in there where they took Tommy? The birdcage? Yeah. It's the last stop before you get it. Just a couple of cells fixed up where they keep an eye on you every second, day and night. Just so you don't cheat the state electrician. Yeah, but Tommy don't go for a week yet. Sure. But if he breaks up, they don't want him driving the rest of his nuts. Some of us still have a long wait. Months. Lock 49. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Visitor for you, Reynolds. The kid? Yeah. Thanks for coming over again. Well, how are the kids treating you? Okay. I don't see them so much anymore. Oh. They're too busy staying away, huh? Yeah. Too busy is because their fathers told them to stay away. Oh, no, Pop. It isn't that. <coughs> Gosh, guess I'm getting a cold. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, how you doing in school? Swell. I'm doing fine. Did you, uh, did you bring me a report card? So you don't trust me, huh? Oh, sure, I trust you, but, well, I, I have to sign it, don't I? Gee, Pop, isn't there some way we can get you out of here? My pal Sam thought of everything when he nailed me in here. Yeah. Pop! Uh, 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 no, none of that. Don't you worry about me. My lawyer's going to appeal for a new trial. A new trial? Can he get it? Why, sure. You see, those witnesses didn't actually see me hit Kenny. Pop, why did they lie like that? Well, I've been giving it a lot of thought, too. You see, they got excited, and they figured I hit him, so they said I did. But my lawyer says that if he can get just one of those witnesses to change their testimony, we're a cinch for a new trial. Even if only one of them takes back the lie? That's right. Gee, that ought to be so hard. But, Pop, hmm? just in case things don't go fast enough, can I bring you a file? In case your pop needs a manicure, we'll see that he gets one. Time's up. Come on, Reynolds. Okay. I'll be back, Pop. Okay. And son, instead of the file, bring me a good report card, huh? Bye. Bye. Come on, sonny. Sims. Hello, Pat. I want to speak to you about my father. I'm awfully sorry, Pat, but there's nothing I can do about it. You see, I had to tell the court all those things about your father. I'm caught in this awful nightmare just as much as you are. Oh, you poor boy. I wish this had never happened. Couldn't you go back and tell him you just remembered it wasn't exactly like you said? That would be telling a lie, Pat. But Pop says he didn't hit Mr. Kenny. Oh, I wish I could save you all this pain. I'll say one spade. Double. Pass. Two no. 
Uh, excuse me, I'll see who that is. Hello, Pat. Yes, what is it? I want to speak to you about my pops. What? What? I want you to take back those things you said in court about my father. Why, how dare you come here and ask me to change my testimony? Go on away. Go on away from here. Just a minute, Mr. Bolger. I gotta speak to you. Open the door. If you don't go away from there, I'll call the police. The whole trouble is Pat isn't getting the proper care. Let's get on with the game. May I review the bidding? It's mine. I'm sure I heard something in the kitchen. Mr. Bolger, I want you to tell the truth about my father. The idea of breaking into my house and insulting us, I won't stand for it. You've got to tell him it wasn't exactly like you said. My father wouldn't lie to me, and he told me he didn't do it. You get out of here. Not until you tell the truth. I'm taking you to the police station right now. Oh, look what you did. Pat. Hey, oh, 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 Louis, hold hand. him for me. You'll be pay for this. Cooperate. Give me police headquarters. Oh, get him! Get him! Hello, police headquarters. I want to report Joe Reynolds' son. He broke into my house and destroyed my property. Sorry, Mrs. Lloyd, but is Joe Reynolds' boy around here? No, he isn't. Well, isn't he over at Marty Hannon's, where he's supposed to be? No, I've been there. What's the matter? He caused a lot of trouble over the Bolger place, saying the Bolger lied at the trial. We're going to have to take him down to the station house this time. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, he's a wild kid. Something's got to be done. Pat's no problem for the police. Certainly not. Well, I got my orders to pick him up. Good night. Well, that mustn't happen. I'm going to find that kid. Sam Lord. Hello, Sam. Hi, Agnes. Say, is Pat around? I'd like to see him. No, he isn't. And when he does come home, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give him a good talking to. Yeah, I know. Pat can be quite a handful. He wouldn't be a real boy if he wasn't. Say, you know, I was thinking that don't you think under the circumstances you ought to start to take things a little easy? Hey, what's this all about? Why, Marty Hannon, you've been boasting. Well, why not? A guy doesn't get to be a father every day. Of course. I can just see Marty when the big day arrives. There'll be no holding him. <laughs> say, you know, it occurred to me that it might be a good idea if Kate and I took Pat. But we don't want to give him up. Well, yeah, I'll say we don't. Well, no, no, just wait a minute. Just be fair. When this new little baby comes along, you two are going to have your hands full. Kate and I are all alone, and we've talked it over at length. We want the boy. Joe would never stand for it. Joe doesn't have to know anything about it. But this is Pat's home. Well, I appreciate how you feel, but Pat's just going to be more and more of a problem to you two from now on. Well, I hate to say yes, but it might be best for everybody. What do you think, Agnes? Oh, all right, but I feel awful about it. Then it's agreed. You're going to let Pat go. Hey, Pat! I'll handle this, Marty. Hey, Pat! Pat! Hey, Pat! It's Sam. Hey, Pat, where are you? Come on, Pat, I've got to talk to you. Get away from me. Hello, Pat. Stay away. Come on, put that wrench down. I bet you told the cops about me, too. Where are they? I'm here to help you from the cops, Pat. Like you helped my father? Come on, put that wrench down and listen to me. Go away. You've caused enough trouble for us. You even think the Hannums ought to throw me out. Oh, Pat. I'll find a place to live. I'm going to help my father. You hear that? That's for you. 
Now, alone against them, you don't stand a chance. But I think I can figure a way to fix it. Just let me help you long enough so as we can get our heads together. I think that between the two of us, we can figure out a way to help Joe. What do you want me to do? Just come along with me. Yeah. That a boy. Come on. Nothing like a piece of pie to put new life into a boy. Sam, let him get some sleep. Mm -hmm. Good night, Pat. Night, Aunt Kate. Well, don't you worry about anything, Pat. Everything's gonna be under control from here on in. Good night, son. Sam. Yeah. Remember one thing. I'm only gonna be working with you. Don't mean I have to like you. Yeah, that's all right. You can hate me every day, including Sundays. Okay. Check. I'll see you now, Mr. Lord. Come in, Mr. Lord. Thanks. Have a chair. Thank you. I'm much obliged for this piece of your time, gentlemen. Frankly, Mr. Lord, this isn't our usual procedure. We assume you told all you know about the case as a trial witness. Yes, sir, I did. Thank you. We'd be happy to listen to any information that might throw new light on the case. But you must confine yourself to pertinent facts. Facts? Well, there's only one fact that I know, and that is that Joe Reynolds is going to the electric chair next Thursday night. And that would be a mistake. A very great mistake, General. Mr. Lord, your letter to this Board of Appeals indicated no new evidence which might justify a recommendation to the governor for a stay of execution. But we were moved by its tone. Well, it's a funny thing, sir, but a lot of times, people don't really see what they think they see. I beg your pardon, Mr. Lloyd. Just what are you getting at? When you know a fellow as, as well as I know Joe Reynolds, you'd swear he just couldn't do the thing that they said he did. His trial testimony showed he was a troublemaker. Well, I can explain that in a very short while. Well, thanks, Mr. Lloyd. We'd appreciate it if you'd be brief. You mind if I smoke my pipe? No, oh, go right ahead. Thanks. Oh, hello, Mr. Lord. I'm sorry. It was no. No, oh, thanks. Yes, sir? OK. They're bringing Reynolds in now. Get ready for him. So this is it for the final week, eh? So that's where it is in there, huh? How do you feel, Joe? How do you think? Can I get you anything? Say, Mike, I heard about your good luck. Yeah, they give me a new trial. They'll be moving me out of this place any minute now. Yeah, good for you. Cheer up, Joe. You'll get a break just like mine. <laughs> I hope you're right. Your case is different. They never had anything on you. You don't belong in here. Well, maybe I don't belong in here, but, brother, I ain't here for my health. Uh, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Brace yourself. Three jumps, seven, 16, and 24. Uh-oh. You better keep your mind in the game, Mike. Joe, it's all set for me to make the break Tuesday night. 
but I won't need it now because they're giving me a new trial. You gonna move your king, Mike? Don't be a sap. Take the chance I'm giving you. I've got the whole layout. All you've gotta do is get in the hospital room. If you can reach the old coal cellar, you're as good as out. A friend of mine in here copied the key and fixed the coal chute. There'll be a car waiting outside. No, my appeal will come through. Don't be a sucker. Besides, you gotta be half dead to get into that hospital. A pal of mine is fixing something for me. Al Edwards on Carey Street. It'll be in a pack of cigarettes with a torn wrapper. The stuff is safe, but it'll put you in the hospital just long enough. Let me slip you the key and the layout from the hospital to the coal cellar. It can't miss. No, I'm innocent. My appeal will prove it. Thanks just the same, Mike. Okay, but I sure hate to see a soft touch like this break go to waste. Four to five. Hello, boss. Visitor outside to see you, Joe. The kid? No, Marty Hannon. I can see the kid again, can I, Warden? Sure, but you oughtn't to let him come up anymore. Tricks, Marty. Fine, Joe. How's the kid behaving himself? Great. He's just fine, Joe. Uh, when are you gonna bring him up again? Uh, soon. He'll be up and see you soon, Joe. He ain't sick, is he? Oh, no, no, no. It's just like I tell you. He'll be up and see you soon. Well, what is it, Marty? Come on, spill it. Oh, I get it. They denied the appeal, huh? Yeah. I can't believe it. Well, I guess that's that. I want to do a favor for a fellow in here. He can't sleep and they won't give him anything. Now listen, go to Al Edwards on Carey Street. He knows what this fellow needs. Get it, bring it here to me. Look, will I get in any trouble? Not if you're careful. Tell him it's for Mike Mulvey. He'll understand. Speak up, Reynolds. Uh, yeah. Well, Marty, thanks for coming up. Bring the kid with you next time, huh? Sure, Joe. And listen, don't give up hope. I don't intend to. All right, Reynolds. Take him back, Fred. So long, Marty. So long, Joe. Say, uh, Tom, uh, can I talk to Mike? Sure, go ahead. Say, Mike. Yeah? I've been thinking that ball team might make the grade at that. Huh? Oh, they're a cinch for the pennant. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take you up on that bet for Tuesday's game. Okay. You want to pay me now? No. And I'm getting my advice from Al. Oh, from Al? Well, he sure knows his stuff. But it's a bet just the same. I think any ball game's a good gamble. Say, Tom, I've been telling Joe about this book. Can you read it? All right. Yeah, thanks. It's one swell book.
Oh, good morning, Judge White. Good morning, Sam. Anything for me? Yeah, just a couple of ads, that's all. That boy of mine. Sure has the lungs for a good lawyer. Yeah, runs in a family, eh? <laughs> You guys are pretty good, aren't you? I'm captain of our team. That's because yeah. he owns the gloves. Is that right? Freddie, how's Governor Hanlon? Oh, he's swell, thanks. Does he know you got a wicked left hook? Oh, sure. Dad got Judge White to show it to me. Yeah. Well, it's my time for the gloves. It's my neck. I'll bet your fathers would be mighty proud if you boys ever won a tournament. I'll say. You know, I think that maybe you kids are good enough to meet my team. Where do you get that oh, good news? Sam, we'd beat the pants off. Well, all right, we'll fix up a tournament. You've got a match right now. We'll slaughter you. Say, do you think that your, your fathers would come to see the bouts? Couldn't keep them away. Mine neither. Oh, that's perfect. Say, Sam, you seem awful anxious to get a match. Oh, sure I am. Why not? All right, I tell you, you fellas come over to my place a little later on. We'll talk it all over, huh? We'll, we'll be there, there Sam. You're right. right. a lot of trouble. Or you yeah. get it. Hey, this is what we'll give him. Come on, come on. Come on, boys. Calm down. Huh? Come on over here. Well, I got something for you that you've been yelling for for quite some time. Outside competition, these fellas have a boxing team. Holy smokes. We didn't ask to murder little kids. We won competition. Don't worry, you'll get it. My name's Hanlon, Freddie Hanlon. And this is Murray White, our captain. Did you say Mary White? That's the fella I want to tangle with. All right, all right. You're both about the same weight. Just save it. Red will cut him to ribbons. Who's going to take on the silent horseman over there? Sorry, but I've quit boxing. We haven't got a chance without you. Don't you want them to win? And they were the ones who were yelling for competition. Yeah, I spotted that yellow streak a mile away. Shut up, you. That's Pat Reynolds. Oh, I didn't know. Listen, Pat. This will be a lot more than a boxing match if it works out. A lot more. It's for Joe. I'm taking Reynolds to the visitor's room. Hi, Ward. Hello, Joe. The boy's here. I'll take him, Tom. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you not to have him up again. It'll be hard on him and on you, too. Okay, Warden. Look, could I stay out of the cage today? I wouldn't like him to remember his last time with me like that, you know? All right, Joe. Thank you, sir. It's a pretty good punch, huh? Yeah. One of the fellas showed me. It'd come in awful handy. You said it. Say, you haven't told me how things are at home. How's Agnes? Ah, oh, she's fine, Joe. Everything's swell. That's good. Well, if anything happens, Marty and Agnes will take care of you. Well, don't look so worried. Nothing's gonna happen to me. Why, with a new trial, I'll be out of here in no time. Sure. Uh, Marty tells me you're playing with the kids again. That, that's fine. That's great. Oh, have you seen our pal, the cigar man, again? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he said hello and, uh... Good luck. Time's up, Reynolds. Pop! Yeah? Can I come up again Saturday? Visiting hours are longer on Saturdays. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll fix it with the warden. In the meantime, take care of yourself, huh? Now beat it. So long, Joe. What is this Joe stuff? Well, everybody calls you that. I want to. Okay, Pat. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. I got a little present for you. Oh, cigarettes, huh? Thanks, Marty. That's just what I needed. Oh, Fred, is it all right if I pass out some of the cigarettes to the boy? The warden said it was okay.
Mind if I borrow your pack, Joe? Uh, no, no, help yourself. and gentlemen, concludes our evening of boxing. Now, the decision of the judges is that because each team has received an equal number of points, the tournament is a draw. Now, I hope that our honored guests will join us for some refreshments. Sorry, Sam. I'm afraid I'll have to run along. Early court in the morning. Good night, Sam. I think I'll skip the lemonade myself. But, Sam. Governor, couldn't you just... If they leave now, everything will be ruined. Red isn't here. He had to practice his music lessons. This is Eddie Murphy, Governor. Glad to know you, Mr. Murphy. We gotta hold him. Yeah, it isn't working out the way I'd hoped it would. So long, Sam. Your boys are all right. <laughs> Thanks. You got a good Say, team. Say, you're the one that called me yellow. Well, I'll take you up on that right now. Forget it, Pat. I didn't mean that. Now, Pat, that wouldn't be a good match. He's too little. <laughs> all right, go on, Pat. Why should he fight a boy that big? One, two, three, four. Oh, Stop it, stop it. Hurry, wait, stop fighting that boy. Go to your corners. Murray, let that boy alone. Give me that hammer. That's my hammer. Murray! Have you gone crazy? Why did you hit him with that hammer? I didn't. Dad, he fell when I pulled back like this. But I saw you hit him. You heard the boy. He said he didn't do it. He certainly did hit him. Yes, he did. I'm not blind. Now, just a minute. I want you to listen. Judge. Did you see Murray hit Red with that hammer? I tell you, I didn't do it. Of course he didn't. It was an accident. All right, that's fine, Judge. I want you to remember what you said, and you, Mrs. Sims, and you, and you. OK, Red, come on, get up. See? It's nothing but tomato ketchup. That's good work, yeah. Now, not one of you actually saw what happened right now, and yet you said you did, and you were wrong. Why, that's exactly the way it happened in Kenny's bakery. Well, sure, that's the way Joe said it happened. Oh, it's just like my, my shoes. I wear them so hard all day that when I take them off, I think I've still got them on. You thought you saw something that you didn't see at all. I resent your using the boys for a thing like this. Dad, we did it ourselves because Pat's our friend. Reynolds had a fair trial. But suppose you were supposed to testify about what happened here tonight. Please, Mr. Governor, you've got to do something before it's too late. 
I'd like Mrs. Sims, you, Mr. Bolger, and Pete Horton to come over to my house right away. Well, I'll bring them over, Judge. Oh, no, I'll Sam. Say... No more of your tricks. You stay here. You come home. What's the matter, Joe? Hey, I'm gonna pass out. Emergency, emergency. He's out cold. Get the doctor. Tell her Wharton Reynolds is sick. When a group of facts or circumstances are of such a conclusive nature as to justify a definite belief, that is called circumstantial evidence. Like Robinson Crusoe, he found footprints on his desert island. From that circumstance, he knew that there was somebody else on the island. Quite right, Freddy. If it were always necessary to have positive or eyewitness evidence, many criminal acts would go unpunished. But in the case of Joe Reynolds, several circumstances might have been accepted and misinterpreted as positive evidence. That's what we're trying to determine in this discussion. Did you see a murder committed, or actually, circumstances that resembled a murder? Governor Hanlon, are you trying to tell me I didn't see Reynolds hit that man with an axe? No, but... No one doubts your honesty, Mr. Bolger. But you were mistaken tonight when the boys fooled you. And so was I. Mr. Bolger, did you see the hatchet actually connect with Kenny's skull? I saw it come down at his head. What more do you want? Did you see it hit his head? Well, when a man raises an axe to strike another man... Answer yes or no. That's what they made my father do. Come on in, Pat. Where's Pat? What's Pat doing here? Go on, Mr. Bolger. Answer yes or no. Did you see the hatchet hit Mr. Kenny's head? I will not be heckled by these children. It's a pertinent question. We're waiting for your answer, Mr. Bolger. No. I didn't see it actually hit Kenny's skull. Oh, but it must have. The coroner said it was an axe wound. No, that was not his testimony. He said it came from a sharp metal edge. Medical legal guff. There ought to be a law against it. That's enough, Murray. Mr. Kenny hit his head against his own stove. And you, Mrs. Sims? You only saw what Mr. Bolger saw, didn't you? Well, you have got me so mixed up by now, I don't know what I saw. No, I didn't actually see the hatchet hit Mr. Kenny's head. How about you, Pete? You never make a mistake. Well, I saw Joe swing the hatchet up to strike Kenny. When Mrs. Sims said you hit him, that's what I thought I saw. But none of you saw Kenny after Mr. Reynolds pulled the axe away from him. You couldn't see him fall against the stove because my father was in the way. None of you saw Red fall tonight, and he fell before I lowered the hammer. Isn't that right? Pete, this is very serious. Honest, Judge White, I thought Joe did it. If I hadn't seen the fight at the boys' club, I'd never have realized that I might be mistaken. Then like the hammer in Murray's hand tonight, the motion of the hatchet in Joe Reynolds' hand comes to us as circumstantial, not as positive evidence. You assume that it did something that it might not have done. You were all very positive at the trial. Yes, because I thought I saw something. But now I realize that I didn't see it. Thank you, Mr. Bolger. The district attorney must look into this. I'm going to give Reynolds a stay of execution. Gee, Mr. Governor, I'm glad my father voted for you. <laughs> I had a hook and a rope in case we needed it. But we don't want it found on us now. I should have my head examined. You know that, don't you? Why? Why? Doing a thing like this for a guy I don't even know. But Mike Mulvey says you're okay, so here's your setup. It's a sealed freight car, and you'll be safe till you get to New York. The tanker sails Thursday night, and you can board her when you get in. Here's your papers. 
And Mac Gordon, able-bodied seaman. That was a lovely picture. Yeah. Something's wrong with the light. This one doesn't work either. Oh, uh, it must be the fuse if they're all out. Put out that match, Marty. Joe! Where's Pat? I gotta talk to him. Pat? Yeah, Pat, Marty. Where is he? He isn't in his room. Oh, he must be at some pal's house. Yeah, hey, Joe, how did you get Look, out? Look, will you find him for me, Marty? I haven't got much time and I gotta tell him something. Sure. Come sure. on, hurry it up, will you? It's pretty late for the kid to be out, Agnes. Oh, he's all right. Nothing to worry about. Marty, is that door locked? Yeah. Get on the window, will you? You shouldn't have gotten away. Look, kid, in six months or a year, I'll be sending for you. But they're going to give you a new trial. New trial? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, that's a lot of hooey Sam's been feeding him. It isn't. We did it tonight. Hey, wait a minute. Have you been seeing Sam again? It's the truth. The governor said he'd help. Answer me. You've been hanging out with that guy again? We fixed a new trial for you. The witness is back down. We made him. So you're Sam's pal again, huh? I should have stayed in jail. Pop! Have I ever lied to you? Have I? But he's right, Joe. You gotta check back into that jail. This I've been waiting. Stand back, Joe. I figured it'd take nothing less than a cannon to make you listen to reason for a change. You needed that, didn't you, Sam? I told him he was gonna get a new trial, Sam. Tell him it's so. That's telling the truth, Joe. We convinced him you're innocent. Pat and I have spent a lot of time over you. I don't know whether you're worth it or not. I'm not saying that you didn't get a bad break. Do what Sam says, Pop. You can't run away now. If you want to beat this rap, you've got to go back now. Well, taking you back at the point of a gun isn't going to cure what ails you. Here, you take it. Make up your own mind. Ah, oh, Pop, you got to believe me. But you mustn't. That kid took a beating getting that break for you with the governor? Please, Pop. The next jail counts at 11. Maybe I can beat the count in, huh, Sam? Joe, listen. They'll shoot you down. Marty, will you stop worrying? Come on, drive me back. Be good, kid. Listen, Marty. I got one more chance to beat the count in. Now, when I go up to those crates, you pull the car around in front of me, right? And get out of here fast. And thanks for everything. Okay.
Tower 12 reporting. Two lights out on the south wall. Right. What's on your mind? I'm going to take another look at Joe Reynolds. You know, that was an awfully quick fever he developed. Yeah. All right, let's go over. If his fever is gone, I'll have him put back in his cell again. Good. No, this is it. Oh. It's all yours. Good. I can't understand why the family wants that lifer's body back. Disgraced him for 17 years. boss. Nice try, Joe. Well, you got me wrong, Warden. See, I was feeling better and I, I was thirsty, so I got up to get a drink. And got dressed? Oh, that. Well, it was, it was cold in here and I, I was freezing to death in this negligee. Well, no harm done. Joe, don't ever scare me like that again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lou. Never again. Howdy, stranger. Pa! 
Hey, mister. 